let us consider what is the unity of Christians. There is a movement that is very much alive now, that's a meeting of Christians to pray for the unity of Christians. There are Bible apps for that. There are invitations that are uh, sent to pray for the unity of Christians. What does that really mean? First of all, let's define what is church. A church is not the building with a steeple in the middle of the village. It's not a building where Christians meet. We use that word, we say, I'm going to church. But this is not church, it's just a building. So even if the building was closed, like recently during the pandemic, church is still alive, church is still open. You cannot close the church because church is not a building. The church is the whole of those that are with Christ, those that walk with Christ, that are called Christians since the first century. A Christian is not someone that goes to church. It's not someone that declares, I am this or I am that. It's not someone that tries to be good and ticks a box. Yes, Christian on a phone. A Christian is someone that has answered the invitation of God in Jesus and that has been born again, born again by God's Spirit. That is a Christian. So there are many people that are in church that are not Christians. That's just normal. Someone quit one day said, it's, uh, it's, it's not because I'm in a garage that I'm a car, you know. Now, what is the unity of Christians? First of all, to understand that, we need to understand that Jesus came to talk about his kingdom. And he told plainly that his kingdom is not of this world, is not on this earth, is not a carnal, a human kingdom. Jesus never looked for political power, and he told people so. And that is, in fact, the reason why he was rejected by the people at that time in his country, in Israel, when he came. Because they were expecting a ruler, someone that would chase away the colonizers, the Romans, and give control to them and expand Israel. And the Jews are still expecting that Messiah. But Jesus came and said, I am the Messiah. I am the Son of God, but my kingdom is not of this earth. And the, the examples prove what is said. For example, it is written in the Bible that the master should treat his slave as himself. At that time in history, they were slaves. It was part of the society. All societies had slaves. And in fact, today in 21st century, they are still slaves in societies. But Jesus came, he didn't tell the slaves to revolt and kill their masters or take control. He told them, love your master and serve him as you serve me. And the master was supposed to love his slave like himself. Now you know if you do that, slavery is destroyed from its roots because what is giving in life would not be there anymore. And that is what the kingdom of God does. The kingdom of God expands from inside to manifest outside. Exactly the opposite of communism. Communism expands from outside calling all workers from every country to unite, unite against those that oppress them. That is an expansion that is human. 
Islam as an expansion that is also human. They expect to expand, expand their caliphate to take on the whole earth. And everywhere they are, they apply their law, the Sharia. That's a human expansion. The kingdom of God is an inside kingdom. Now, in the same way, the church expands not by building buildings and places of worship, but from one to one to one to one, receiving people as part of the family of God. And the Christians are united to God as stones, living stones, living sacrifices that are attached like the branches to the vine, like the body to the head. Jesus is the head and the church is his body. And the church is one. And it is written in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 5, that we are one body, one spirit. We have one hope. We have one faith and one baptism. So if we are one body, then that's all right. We don't need to be united because one body is already made up of organs and ligaments and everything that is united. Otherwise, I would not be talking. I would be dead. And for the body to be alive, the, the heart must be beaten, but it has to be attached to the head. If they cut my head, I'm dead. And for us to be united with Christ individually, we need to be fully aligned with him. If you plug a lamp, a table lamp, to the socket, if you don't push the socket well, it's not fully connected, there will be no light at all. I've experienced that one day by accident. I didn't push enough. There was no light. I was wondering, is the bulb dead? No. You need to be completely, fully connected to the head. And once you are, then you are alive. And all of us are one body. And so there are some that, that may not be fully connected. And so the body, in that case, becomes a bit dysfunctional. But it's not to be repaired by meetings and political calls and compromises. Ecumenism wanted to repair the body of Christ by meetings, putting people together, Catholics, Protestant, Orthodox, bringing them together. Some of them did that as one body by life, life together like in Tese. But ecumenism, ecumenism was and is a kind of global organism that calls people to sit down together and discuss their doctrine. And they even published a book, a, a Bible together. And you can imagine the dis discussions and debate that went on to, ag to agree on what was going to be written there so that the translations would agree. And we know that this is not perfect. And then, as time went on, this expanded to start great reaching out to all traditions and all religions so that now we see the Pope today making friends with Imams, inviting Catholics and Muslims to come together. And this is not what God planned. If you look at John, the Gospel of John chapter 15, Jesus talks about the vine and the, and the branches. Then in chapter 17, he prays for his disciples and then after that, he prays for those that will become his disciples, us, that we may be one. He didn't mean for us to start 
getting together like the G7 or G20 uh, meetings, political meetings, he meant that we should all be fully consecrated in direct and perfect contact and alignment with him individually because when we are like that then when we come together it's all one i've met christians in all countries that i traveled to i attended churches in some places i could not even speak properly i met christians in germany in senegal in nigeria in the uk in france and other places when we are fully connected with him we are fully connected with each other because that's logical is a physical fact and also a spiritual one and so there is no need for us to struggle and compromise and start dis deceiving ourselves that okay maybe uh, Christians are, oh we are all the same but uh, you know, let's uh, organize our ways of worshiping and uh, tinkering with our Bibles. And we are one. Jesus said, one body, one faith, one baptism. The issue is, do we go to his word? Do we read his word? Do we ask the Holy Spirit to guide us to understand? His word, not only up here in the head, but in the heart. Let it change our lives, and then you will experience the unity of church. Bless you.